I'm recording. Take it away again, Mr. Greeny. Sorry about that. All right, no worries. Um, so first of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen with you. Now everybody should see the first slide that says grad point training for students. So we're going to start with your remote supervisors. These are the teachers that are going to be working with you and assisting you as needed. I've also listed their emails there. So there's Mr. Beeson, Mr. Barnacle, Ms. Cowan, Ms. Hall, Ms. Cabral, and Ms. Durgan. Those will be the teachers that you reach out to if you need help. If they cannot help you, they will then reach out to a content specific class or teacher and they will be able to get help for you. The next slide is going to be your grad point URL, student name and password. This is very important that you use this URL. If you just type in gradpoint.com and try to log on, you will be unsuccessful. We at Old Rochester have a specific URL that we use for GradPoint. This is the only URL you will be able to access your GradPoint courses through. Your username is going to be your first name, your last name at oldrochester.org. It is also your email. I did that so it is easy to remember for you and everybody's will be the same if we need to go into it. Your password will be your first initial, last initial, all lowercase, and then your specific student ID. So for example, below Grace Greeny at oldrochester.org, her password would be GG10853. That is how you will log into GradPoint every time you log in. So once again, the password is all lowercase and then your student ID. Your username is not case sensitive. As long as you have your first name, your last name at oldrochester.org, you will be able to log in. A quick note about your schedules. Please make sure you follow your schedule. If for some reason you wake up and say, I don't feel like working on math today, and you have math first block, you still must work on math. It is very important that you stick to this schedule and stick to your remote supervisor because they expect you to be working on a specific class with them. We have arranged it so you try to have the best support possible. So your math classes, we've tried to arrange with a math teacher. So you are, it's very important that you stick to the schedule and not jump around to whatever class you feel like taking on that day. <clears throat> I'm going to switch now to the grad point home screen. Can everybody see that? You're messing me up at 4.30 in the morning. Okay, so now when you log on, you will see this screen. You will not have all of these courses. You will only have the courses that you are enrolled in. So the first time you log on, you will need to look at PowerSchool, look at your courses, and make sure they match up. I did over 80 schedules, so there might be one missing. There may be one that doesn't, is not supposed to be there. Not a big deal. It is easily fixed. But the first thing you do, you will look and make sure all of the classes that you have on your home screen are the classes that you signed up for. Okay, that would be the first thing you do. So when you log into your home screen, you will start, say you have an Algebra 1 class. You will click on the Algebra 1 book, per se, in the front. At this point, all of the sections will come up that you are responsible for. It seems like a lot, but it is a year class. At that point, you will go to the course home. You will look at student resources and you will read through that. That is very important because also if you are taking an elective that requires an ebook, it will also be in the course home page and you must first access the ebook before you can begin the course. So you will go over student resources. Student resources for Algebra 1, how to get started. Learn quick tips for navigation and strategies for taking courses online. This will tell you how to navigate GradPoint. The next would be course overview. It's going to tell you basically an overview of the course, what to expect with the course. And lastly, you'll have your syllabus for the course. So I would probably be in a student if I was to be in an Algebra 1 class. Probably one of the first things I do, I would print out my syllabus. I would put that in my binder, and we'll talk about binders shortly, but I would put that in my binder, and that's how I would start a class, just as you would start a class if you were in person at Old Rochester. Once you have got through this, you will go on to number one, 
you cannot go on to number two until you finish all the sections in number one. If you took a summer class over the last, well, it'd be ninth and 10th grades last year, you'll notice there's one thing that is missing. It is a pretest. We have eliminated the pretest from these courses. So you must go through each section in order, in order to move on to the next unit. So for example, you'd have to get through using variables. You will have a quiz on using variables. You must pass that quiz in order to move on and I will get to the scores later. And then you will move on sequentially through this unit. Once you, at the end of the unit, all of the units will have a post-test. Some electives may not have a post-test, but most of your core classes will have a post-test at the end of each unit. And I will talk about the passing score for that shortly, but you must either pass that or a teacher must move you on before you can go on to the next section. Once you are done there, you will keep moving on to each unit. Some of the classes also have projects or extensions to the unit. You will also need to complete those. If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out to your remote supervisor. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna go back to the slideshow. Okay, so all grad point courses is something are called sequential, which I just spoke to a little bit, unless it's an elective. A sequential course means that you cannot test out of certain units. You must go in order, you must complete them in order to move on to the next unit. Some grad point classes are labeled with Algebra A, Algebra B, or Biology A, Biology B. That is not level. All the A and the B signify is first semester for A, second semester for B. What the only class that is exempt from that is your US history. US history A is US one, US history B is US two. So do not panic if you log in and you see two biology icons, two biology books there. One is just first semester, the other one is just second semester. You must do A before you do B, okay? That is very important. Alerts, okay, so if you do not receive a passing score of 65 on a post-test or a 70 on a quiz, you must alert your remote supervisor. At that point, your remote supervisor must manually pass you through that quiz or test, okay? This is a little bit different as well from if you took it in the summer. If you had a class in the summer, if you remember, you were able to take the post-test twice and you were also able to take the quiz multiple times before you move on. Being that all your classes are going to count towards GPA, class rank, you are only allowed one attempt on the quiz and one attempt on the post-test, just as you would if you were in the building. Okay, this is very important. Really need you to listen carefully here. All grad point assessments are open notebook. What that means is that it is a requirement for you to keep a binder for each one of the classes you are enrolled in. You must take notes for each class as your notes will be checked periodically by your remote supervising teacher and passed in upon completion of the course. I would recommend you take notes on Google Doc so they're easily shared upon request. Although this is recommended, it is not required. If you are more comfortable handwriting your notes, you are free to do that as well. Lastly, it is against grad point policy to use the internet to look up any answers or materials during an assessment. If you're caught doing this, you will immediately fail the class and you're gonna say, I'm at home, who will know? There are ways and safeguards built in to the grad point program that will give us indications that you are on the internet. So let me repeat this. It is against grad point policy to use the internet to look up any answers or materials during an assessment, assessment, quiz, post-test. If you're caught doing this, you will fail, immediately fail the class. And once again, there are safeguards built into grad point that will alert myself or your remote supervisor that the internet is being used during a post-test, okay? So we don't wanna fail anybody. We are trusting you to be young adults that you are. Please do the right thing. You're at home, please do the right thing. 
That's all I'm going to say on that. Okay, uh, next. Common technology issues, okay? These are the problems that I've run into over the years where the students are saying, Mr. Greeny, I cannot log in. First and foremost, make sure you have the correct URL for GradPoint. It is very important. I shared that earlier. We will share it again. It has to be that URL. Other schools have their own URL. We have a specific URL for us. It must be that URL in order for you to log on. Make sure your computer has your flash is up to date and you allow pop-ups for GradPoint. A lot of the GradPoint courses run videos. These videos need a flash, updated flash to run the videos. So if you go onto a screen and the video will not load, the first thing I would do is to make sure your pop-ups are allowed for the GradPoint site and make sure your flash is up to date. Next, always check your username and password. Password is case sensitive, username is not. Just make sure you typed it in correctly um, for that. I would also suggest using Google Chrome for your web browser. Safari does not work well. I have learned that over the years. Google Chrome works the best for GradPoint. Um, I know a lot of you are probably using Chromebooks, so that will not be an issue. If you're using a PC, um, Internet Explorer should work. If you run into a problem, let us know. Um, Firefox also works pretty well. These right here, a couple of video tutorials that Mr. Duvall um, got for us. I've just listed them in the slideshow just so you'll have access to them to watch. I would recommend watching both of these before you begin. A lot of it will be repetitive to what I said, but a lot of it will help you with the little things at grad point that you may need to navigate. Okay, now at this time, I'm gonna open it up for questions. If you're not comfortable asking a question, feel free just to type it into the chat and I will answer it the best I can. Okay, Mr. Beeson. I would, if your schedule is wrong, I would email the guidance counselor and please CC me on the email as well. So I am aware and I will take care of that right away for the student. Mr. Greeny, um, yes. I just, I, I, we've had some new students join um, since I made this announcement, but if you have not done so yet, please enter your name into the chat for attendance purposes for this morning, okay? Uh, we are gonna be reaching out to every student that did not do that, that was supposed to be here. So if we wanna get credit for being here. It's the first day of school. Make sure you put your name at some point today, at some point now into the chat. Now would be a good time. Do it now, do it now, do it now, okay. Okay, what, um, and as you go, the best way to figure out grad point I've learned over the years is just logging on and start clicking through the buttons. I think that is the easiest way. You're not gonna hurt anything. You're not gonna disturb your class. You only have student access, so there's nothing you're gonna change for other students. So when you have time before you get in, just start clicking through the buttons. Let's click through the message, uh, the announcements, and just kind of get yourself familiar with the platform. But those two tutorials will help as well. And if you do have any questions, you can ask your remote supervisor, and if they can't help, they'll we'll come to me, and I'll be glad to help you. So a good question in the chat from Nick. Um, do we have to start classes today? No, you do not. Um, what I would do if I were you is to make sure all of the stuff Mr. Greeny talked about, like the login, all you could do all of the things you need to, okay? I would make sure of that because classes officially start tomorrow, okay? So tomorrow, everyone, is a day two, all right? It's day two, so you will have day two blocks one, two, three, and four. So if you're looking into your power school, power school's a little bit funky uh, because things have changed. So I'm gonna, this is what you're looking for tomorrow. Any course that has 1B, 2B, 3B, or 4B. Now there's another digit like 1BA or 1BB. Just focus on the first two, okay? So 1B starts at 7.30 a.m., all right? And you're, you're logging in. Go to the remote classroom, the remote Google classroom. Join the video conference for 7.30. Get your attendance taken by the teacher of record. I don't know who the teacher is tomorrow, block one, off the top of my head, but um, they're out there. Um, and then you 
get on your way and you work from 7.30 to 8.55. That's a long time, okay? So I would recommend taking breaks, getting up. Um, there was an email that I got about a Zoom meeting today at 12.20. Do I go to that or is that a mistake? Adam, don't go to that. You made it to the way you needed to be today. You did your job. Good work. All right, so then you then at after 7.30, your class ends at 8.55. You'll log back in towards the end, all right, towards the end of 8.55 so that you can fill out a Google form that will be in your um, Google Classroom. And in that Google form, you'll tell us what you did that block, okay? You will get, be descriptive. Today, I worked on biology. I worked on module one and I took notes and you're gonna be descriptive as to what you did. Then you have a five minute break. And then at 9.03, you're looking for anything that's to be. That's your next class, all right? You go into the Google Classroom, you log into a new video conference, you take attendance, because your, your 1B class was, let's say it was English, 2B, you're gonna be working on something different. So this four blocks a day. And most likely that 2B is blank. Maybe a lot of you have nothing 2B, okay? Because we only gave you three classes a day instead of four classes a day. So if you're looking in PowerSchool and you don't see anything for 2BA or 2BB, that's okay, that's correct, all right? So what do you do during that time? Take a break because we don't want us Zooming all day long or continue working if you want, but just know that you will, there's no attendance and there's no staff supervising you during that time. Then you come back for 3B, either 3BB or 3BA, all right? That begins at 1036, all right? And then you log into the Google Classroom, take the attendance, do all of those good things, and you continue working. And then you have your lunch, you can have lunch during class if you want, whenever you want to have your lunch, okay? Uh, but you're working, and then your last class begins at 12.35. You're looking for 4BB or 4BA, all right? You do the same exact thing Friday, too. So Thursday and Friday look the exact same for you. You're going to have the same four classes Thursday, the same four classes on Friday, all right? I've thrown a, I, I just feel like I just overwhelmed you in the last three minutes of my talking. If you have any questions, there's no bad questions. This is all new to all of us. If you're not comfortable asking it in the chat, email me. I'd be happy to get right back to you today. So we've got five minutes left in this session. If, um, after that, you're, you're done for the day, okay? You did your job. You got where you needed to be. That was big, okay? If you wanna try playing around with your, your grad point, try logging in, do all of those things. Uh, you should do that. Mr. Greeny, will you share this Google slide presentation into the Google Classroom? I sure can. All right. Question. I only have some of my Google classes on Google Classroom. So there is only one class that you need on Google Classroom. There, the remote learning Google Classroom. That's it. Okay. The remote learning. Unless you have a learning center in your schedule, then there's a separate Google Classroom for your learning center. So if you got invited to classes like Mr. Chase's class, Mr. Kane's class, that's because we pro they probably created those Google Classrooms before we took you out of their classes. You need one Google Classroom to survive. It is the remote learning classroom, all right? You're welcome, Kendall. And please reference Mrs. Moniz's uh, comment in the chat. It's, it's very pertinent and relevant. Any other questions? I promise you students are gonna be better at this than we are. You guys grew up in the software world, in the online world with these, Mr. Greeny's great advice. Just start clicking your way. You'll figure it, you will, I promise you will figure it out. We've had a lot of success over the last 13 years with GradPoint, okay? And I want you to know that we are here to help you. And all of the teachers listed, whether it's Mr. Barnacle, Ms. Cowan, Mr. Beeson, whoever it is, we are here to help. And if we can't help you, we will find the help. All right. So Adam, you only have five classes. 
email. Your, it looks like your guidance counselor will be Miss McPhee. Send Miss McPhee an email and just ask her, is it okay that I only have five classes? There's her email address. Last call for questions. So the next time we will see you will be tomorrow at 7.30 for your first class. Are we going, are there going to be Zoom classes all at all today for class? No, there are not, Kira. Okay. No, they're not. All right, last call because our teachers need to transition to uh, their first uh, hybrid assignment today. We're living in two worlds. This is exciting. Five, four, three, two, one. I've stopped recording.